Hi guys, hi, how's it going? How are you doing today? Hopefully today finds you well. Today I'm gonna walk through the things that I do not buy anymore. I've seen this on a couple channels in mine and in many of them. It's not just beauty products, it's a little bit of everything. Mine is mostly beauty. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, please keep on watching. For those of you new here, hi, my name is Donna. I'm a lover of all things high in colorful beauty and self-care. I also work in the beauty industry as a field leader for Ulta Beauty. I get a lot of education in my position. I like to bring you that education here on my platform, but ultimately I'm just out here talking about makeup because I love makeup and you people are my people. I'm assuming if you're here, you also like to talk about makeup and I hope that you'll want to subscribe before you go. Today we're going to go through the things I no longer buy and let's just jump in. So the first thing on my list is beauty subscriptions. When I first got into YouTube, like the biggest thing was unboxing channels, right? I watch Ex Alexandria Ryan. I love her channel, but for the most part, unboxings was the thing. And in my mind, unboxings was the thing that we did when we couldn't figure out anything else to do with our channel. That's not to say that people that do unboxings are not creative with their channel. That's just to say, that's how I interpreted my channel. I had to have unboxings going on on my channel because I couldn't be creative with anything else that I was doing. I knew that an unboxing was gonna give me at least one video every single month and potentially two if I were doing like a try on of the stuff that I got in Ipsy also, but I subscribed to like three different boxes. And of those three different boxes, I had not only the regular box, but also the premium box, right? And everything costs money. But to have two BoxyCharm prescri sub prescriptions, subscriptions, two Ipsy subscriptions, then making a third Ipsy subscription because I wanted that big old, you know, premium box or whatever it was. And then FabFitFun also. And then I had a friend who was getting Birchbox who gave me her Birchboxes almost every single month. Like, it was a lot. It was a lot. And I accumulated so much crap <laughs> that I could not use it all. And then I also had hoarders mentality because I was just starting my channel and what if I needed and what if I, I wanted and what if and what if and what if to the point that I have t had to toss so many things that have maybe expired. I've been giving away a lot of things to my family members that I just know I'm never going to use that maybe came in some of those boxes. I just canceled them. So I canceled BoxyCharm I believe two and a half years ago at this point, I really did think that Ipsy was going to be a point of contingency for me because it's the first one that I subscribed to and it's one that I was getting three different bags from, but it hasn't. I unsubscribed from Ipsy, it'll be two years in September. I also haven't looked back. You know, you still get those emails where they're like, hey, come back and we'll give you this and you get this twinge of, oh, I need that. But I have taken that money that I would have been spending on those boxes and just utilized it in different ways. Like if I want a product, I will buy the product knowing that I am not spending, you know, $300 a year on BoxyCharm and $300 a year on Ipsy, which was stupid. Another one is makeup mystery boxes. I got burned. I bought some very early in my channel days. I would buy some mystery boxes because they were pretty cheap. You know, I could spend 60 bucks and get like eight items or 12 items versus 60 bucks and getting one item. When I started this channel, I had just started wearing makeup for the first time in my entire life. So I did not have like any kind of collection to speak of and you need makeup to do makeup videos. So I bought some mystery boxes from eBay, from Mercari, from all the places, right? Poshmark. And I ended up getting some great items, but I also ended up getting some knockoff items. And I didn't really know that they were knockoffs until I got further along in my makeup journey. I think I have a video out of me reviewing the Swamp Queen palette by Tarte um, in collaboration with Bunny. And in that video, I talk about how I discovered that that palette that had been in my collection for years at that point was a fake. 
and it was very traumatic for me. I had some very serious reactions to the product and I won't do it anymore because I'm just, just terrified. When you are getting, you know, $200 worth of items for 60 bucks, there's something that's not right about that. And I'm not, you know, a pessimist. I'm just a realist. And I have become this way specifically about these things because of a bad experience. The next thing that I have on here is plastic hangers. I hate wire hangers and wire hangers I don't even think exist anymore, but plastic hangers are so big and bulky and they take up so much room on your closet rod. So I started moving towards the hangers that have like the velvet on them. What I love most about these hangers is like shirts like this where they've got a really wide neck and they're kind of off the shoulder. I can still hang these on those hangers without there being any any harm, no foul on whether this shirt is going to stay on the hanger or not. It stays 100% because that velvet grips on to the shirt. It's just kinder to my garment. I know that that sounds stupid, but the velvet is soft and it doesn't like create ridging on the garments if they've been hanging for too long. So I just started buying the velvet hangers for my clothes because my clothes are, you know, sometimes slippy, sometimes larger necked, and they just stay better on a velvet hanger. So the next thing I have on here is hair clips, headbands, blah, blah, blah. If you're familiar with my channel, I spent a good portion of my time on this channel hauling in things like rubber bands and hair clips and I had a thing for headbands a while back. I'm looking at like 12 of them sitting on a headband holder over there on one of my shelving units. I stopped purchasing those because I just don't wear them. I mean the other day in a video I was wearing like five clips across my head but because I have them. As they start breaking I just don't purchase them anymore. I don't have enough hair for ponytails so that it doesn't make any sense to buy ponytail holders. The headbands are convenient sometimes but I have plenty I don't need any more and 90% of them are black. Clips I don't need because I don't ever, I, my hair is always short. There's no reason for me to have them. In addition to hair accessories, I also quit buying things like curling irons and <laughs> blow dryers because I also don't put heat on my hair. So tell me why do I want one of those stupid Dyson Air wraps that's like 600 bucks? I want it. I, I want it. So yes, that's not heat necessarily, but I also don't do anything with my hair. It lays straight most of the time. So why do I want the tools? Why do I want the headbands? Why do I want the, I don't, I don't need them. So I quit buying them and that has saved hundreds of dollars. Tools are crazy expensive. Speaking of tools, the other thing that I quit buying was facial tools. What I have learned about myself over the last several years is that I love facial tools. I love to look at facial tools but I don't want to use that facial tool on my own skin because I'm terrified of that facial tool. Yet I have seven facial tools over there in my collection. As a matter of fact, I just talked about one of them in my haul in retrospect for the month of December. It was $150 altogether with it in the blade kit. And then the additional item that I bought to go with it was another hundred bucks. I mean, granted I got a discount because from Ulta, but why am I, why am I buying tools? I will never use them. I'm terrified to use them. My skin is so sensitive and I am terrified that I am going to destroy it. So I just don't use them. So I quit buying them. Another thing I quit buying was shaving cream. I have found in the last year that I really prefer a shaving oil. If I don't have a shaving oil, I will use a conditioner. I have found that those two products keep the moisture within my skin, in my skin throughout the shaving process better than a shaving cream did. I have gone through a journey of this shaving cream and then this shaving cream and now I've been using the Tree Hut shave oils and I 
love them. You use less. They don't make the mess that like some shaving creams do. And I just feel like my skin stays hydrated in the way it needs to stay. It doesn't come out of the shower looking like, you know, a reptile because the uh, the shaving process has dried out, exfoliated, but dried out my skin so badly that I just itch all the time and oil kind of prevents that for me. Another thing that I have noticed, like I spoke to conditioner, I've noticed that conditioner does almost the same thing that the oils do as far as maintaining the moisture in my skin. The other thing is that when I wash my hair, I don't always condition it. So I'm always running out of my shampoo before my conditioner. And this has helped me maintain like how often I am using both of those products. The next thing I want to talk about is sheet masks. Like I feel like I maybe have bought five sheet masks in the entire time I've actually been on YouTube and the rest of them came from Ipsy. I just want to try and steer away from those one-time use products. I have plenty of wonderful face masks that I can use that are in a like in a tube or in a pot and this is a wholehearted like 180 from where I was as a YouTuber at the beginning of my YouTube journey because I didn't want to use a potted skincare item because of the mess that it creates but ultimately it creates less waste and it, my skin feels better for longer after using a mask that comes in a pot or a tube. I am trying to get through all of my, my sheet masks, but I never buy them anymore. The other thing along those same lines is makeup removing wipes. So I used to be a makeup removing wipe connoisseur. I went through probably eight to 12 bags a year in my empties. You would see bags and bags and bags and bags of makeup wipes or makeup cottons because that's how I took off my makeup. That is also how I took the makeup off my arms when I did swatches. I have since found that I just don't want to be that kind of um, consumer anymore. I haven't bought a makeup wipe pack in years at this point. I think two, maybe three years at this point. I think that there was some in my empties last year, but I do think I quit purchasing makeup wipes at the end of 2020. So it's almost, well, it is currently the end of 2022. So two years ago, I quit purchasing makeup wipes. Yet I had such a back stock that <laughs> I had them in my empties last year because we're also talking about makeup cottons. Currently, this is what is left of the Shiseido cotton that I had in my collection before I decided not to purchase those anymore. I, I instead am using makeup erasers. I have probably 10 on rotation for overall makeup removal at the end of the day, but I also have the little like um, finger like ones for wiping off like certain parts of my makeup application, but I just keep a makeup eraser with me at all times and here in my room in my bathroom so that I can remove makeup that way and you just add water to these and it takes everything away. So love that for me and for the environment, let's be honest. I think I bought two mascaras this year and I think I bought one mascara the year before, but I work at Ulta Beauty. So I get mascara all the time in gratis. I had 47 in my backup drawers when I did my backup drawer declutter and decided to get rid of all but I think 20 of those is what I kept. There's just no reason for me to buy a mascara. At this point, I have enough mascaras to live a hundred lifetimes, <laughs> I do believe. I do like to only use a mascara for three to four months before tossing it because I try and be very careful about what I'm putting around my eyes that could potentially go into my eyes. I'm very grateful for the fact that I have a huge back stock of mascara and I get them all the time because then I don't have to purchase them all the time. And mascara is not cheap, not always. I mean, even drugstore mascaras, the good ones are pretty typically not cheap. So 
essence is an anomaly situation. But I'm very grateful for my back stock, but mascara is just not one of those things that I am buying anymore. I, I think, like I said, I've bought three mascaras in the last four years. Next is liquid lipstick. So it's kind of funny because I wrote this list prior to, I always have like these ideas going and I'm making lists always and doing all the things, all the things YouTubers do, right? And I made, I put this on the list prior to last month when I hauled in two liquid lipsticks. <laughs> um, but those are the only two liquid lipsticks that I have purchased in five years. And I purchased them because they're liquid lipsticks that I put on to my hand. They continued to be comfortable. I wore it for like eight hand washes before it came off and it only came off when I used a makeup remover. I had to physically take it off of my hand to do it. And I did buy two. I haven't worn them since the month that I bought those two. So there's a reason why I don't purchase liquid lipsticks anymore. Those ones are super comfortable. So if I got rid of all of my liquid lipsticks today, those two would probably stay. But I no longer purchase liquid lipstick because I just found throughout the years that my preference is actually a lip liner with a gloss on top. I don't even like lipsticks, but I do purchase lipsticks on occasion. So, um, liquid lipstick would be on my list. Another one is eyeliners. I have purchased liquid liners in the, you know, past year. Although I don't think that I've purchased very much if I'm honest, but pencil liners. So pencil eyeliners that look like this. I have way too many. Obviously it was a point of contingency in my life. It was something that I thought I needed all the things of. But truth be told, I honestly hardly ever wear a pencil eyeliner anymore. My lower lash line is mostly shadow. If I wear a pencil liner, it's to tight line, but I can get almost the same effect by the liquid eyeliner, depending on how close I get to my lash line. So I don't find that I often have to tight line. Right now I have a pencil liner in my project pan, so I am tight lining more often than I typically do, but I don't buy pencil eyeliners anymore because I never use them anymore. I used to, but I just hardly ever do anymore. The next thing I have on here is glowy bronzer. I'm just not a glowy bronzer person. I think I decluttered the two like really glowy bronzers that I had in my collection. When I think about bronzer, I don't think about glow. Um, I love a glowy blush, I love a highlight, but I need a matte bronzer. And, and I use bronzer and contour like interchangeably uh, for the most part on my face. So I need it to be a matte product. I don't want it to be glowy. There are some bronzers that I have in my collection that are a little bit more like emollient or um, like natural finish, but they're definitely not glowy. And I do like those, but I definitely want a matte bronzer. And that's something that I learned about myself over this last year, honestly, through Shop My Stash. I also no longer buy rainbow eyeshadow palettes. You guys remember? Do you remember? <laughs> oh my God, I cannot believe I just sang. You guys have to remember all of the rainbow palettes that I was bringing into my collection a couple years ago. I think it's been a good two years since I've purchased a rainbow palette. I have so many rainbow palettes. Like how many rainbow palettes does one person need? But like, honestly, I, I dig an eyeshadow look that is very colorful, but you don't need 50 rainbow palettes in your collection. These days, every time I look at a rainbow palette, I'm like, oh, another rainbow palette. I never thought I would get to that point, but that is where I'm at. Um, case in point, the Stacey Marie Carnival, new Carnival palette came out and I was like, how many, legitimately how many Carnival palettes do we need that are 50 shades of rainbow? Why is this a thing? Another thing that I have on here is powder. You guys know, <laughs> I do not wear powder. I say this all the time over and over and over again. The last powder I purchased was this one. So it's been quite some time since I purchased a powder. I just don't wear powder. I don't love powder. I'm trying to get through my powder in my Shop My Stash series. 
I have dwindled my powder collection, which was at like, I don't know, something astronomical, like 20 or so down to like, I think seven is what's in my collection now. Um, through declutter, I think I did pan one, maybe two, um, but they were little tiny guys. I don't like powder. I have really dry skin. I very rarely have a moment in time where I'm like, oh, I need to powder. Very rarely. I don't, there's one powder that I could see myself purchasing and it's only because everybody on the planet loves it. And I'm like, what is so awesome about it? And that is the Kosas powder. I really, really love this powder. And I really, really love this powder, which came to me in a lucky bag. I, I really do love those two powders, but I just don't, I just don't wear powder. There's no reason for me to buy powder. Another one that is on that same list, that same thought process is glitter. I have never liked glitter. I have tried glitter a couple times, but I firmly believe that glitter is the cancer of craft stores. It gets everywhere and it never goes away. And I don't want that stuff falling into my eyeballs. So I don't like wearing it on my lids. I will not I hate an extra step in makeup application, so I don't love having to carry around a glitter primer just to make sure that my eyeshadow sticks to my lids. Like, there are reasons. The biggest reason why is because it's damn messy. It's damn messy, and I don't want to be pulling it off of my skin for the next 40 days because I decided to wear glitter on my eyes. So every time I get glitter in anything, it goes straight into my backup bins for giveaway because I am not wearing it. I like a glowy thing. I like a colorful thing. But as a woman who is 46 years old, the last thing I think I need is like even highlights that are all glitter, like a big stripe of glitter. I just want it to look seamless and glitter doesn't make anything look seamless. <laughs> false lashes is another thing. I have a bunch of false lashes because I've gotten them in gratis or I did purchase them at one point in time because I thought I was going to be a lash girl. You guys can see I'm just not a lash girl. They're uncomfortable. They feel heavy on my lids. They're like caterpillars. They hit my, I wear glasses in real life and they hit my glasses and I just don't like them. I will wear them occasionally for a video, but literally the same eight pairs I purchased when I first started in YouTube are exactly what is in my bins, my drawers right now for lashes, except for I, I think I sent my friend Grace two pair years ago. Those are now not in there anymore, but the same pairs that I started this channel with are still in my drawers. I have setting sprays because I hardly ever use setting sprays anymore unless it is to like wet my brush, foil my shadows because it dries out my face and I already have dry skin as I said. I have noticed a really big difference between me using setting sprays and me not using setting sprays in the dryness of my skin. In addition to that, my skin doesn't really eat makeup, so to speak. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. I just don't have oily skin. So uh, my makeup usually stays where I place it all throughout the day. And I know that that is an anomaly situation, not for everybody, but my blush will fade. That is the product that tends to lose itself on my face, but that's not a big enough deal for me to have to purchase and use a setting spray. Setting sprays dry out my face so bad. The only one that doesn't is the Benefit Pore Setter. I really do like that one, but I also know where it used to take me a month to get through a setting spray. This one I've been using for like eight months at this point for foiling my eyeshadows. I sprayed on my face these last couple days because it's almost gone and I just, I just want it gone. The last one took me, I think, eight months to use up as well. It takes me forever to use them up, so I'm just not purchasing them anymore, and that used to be something I purchased all the time. As a matter of fact, I remember coming here and talking to you guys about an Urban Decay set that you could buy around the holiday season that had two of the full-size all-nighter sprays in it that you could get for like 32 bucks back then, and full-size was like 22 back then. So it was a good deal, right? I remember having those conversations specifically on my channel because I purchased them all the time. I just don't do it anymore. 
The other thing is a whole brand. I don't buy anything from Morphe anymore. I don't necessarily think that Morphe is horrible. And it's weird that I'm like, I don't buy anything from Morphe anymore when I also don't buy anything from ColourPop anymore. But for some reason, Morphe is worse than ColourPop in my brain. And I, I, I don't know why that is because I do own a lot more Morphe in terms of palettes than I own from ColourPop. But I think ColourPop is just really super consistent and you could get like eight out of 10 quality from them and they are super consistent. Morphe is inconsistent and you're getting eight out of 10 at best, but two out of 10 at worst. And because of the inconsistency and everything, you can't ever trust what you've got from them. So I just don't buy anything from them anymore. I do have some Morphe brushes, but I've even gotten to the point where I don't want to buy a Morphe brush. I think I've been through one specific Morphe brush like 18 times over the last five years because it they just fall apart so easily and they shed and shed and shed. So even if you are not going to get rid of the brush because it's not falling apart, the fact that you have to pick off little like brush hairs off your face because your your brush is falling apart drives me bonkers. My motto going into I think 2022, maybe even 2021 was Morphe don't have anything I need. And they don't have anything I need. The last two items are nail polish, nails, nail stuff. This is what my nails look like 90% of the time. They are neat, they are short, they are natural. I hate fake fingernails or the feel of fake fingernails on my fingers. For whatever reason, it feels like my little fingernails are talking to me saying, oh, we can't breathe. And then I want to peel everything off. So it's just a giant waste of money. And again, in my haul in retrospect, I had two different like nail things that I brought into my collection this time last year that I haven't even touched. So it doesn't make any sense to me anymore. I don't think I've bought nail stickers in a year. I don't think I've bought anything for my nails in a year. And I used to buy nail stickers like nobody's business. My nails looked different every single time I came on camera. And the last thing, the last thing you guys is seasonal makeup. So in the beauty, and this is makeup, but it's more of an idea of makeup. So I wanted to stick it last because in the beauty community, we typically buy, or we have, you know, this is my summer foundation. This is my winter foundation. This is my summer bronzer. This is my winter bronzer. I quit buying makeup products for those reasons because I feel like with foundation specifically, you can get one shade that matches you 90% of the time and buy like deepening drops to make it darker and buy lightening drops to make it not, you know, as dark. And I even have the blue ones to make it less warm if I happen to get it and it's a little too warm for me during a certain season or whatever. I have way too many foundations to think of my foundations in terms of which season I'm going to wear them. I think that there are certain like color stories that I think of pulling during certain seasons, but I'm also not buying makeup for certain seasons or keeping makeup because it's a good winter blush. I do think of those things during those time frames, but I'm not buying for the sole purpose of it suiting a season anymore which I used to. I need a summer foundation because this foundation is too light. No, buy some deepening, deepening drops, buy some bronzing drops and mix it in. There's just so much that you can do with your makeup to make it work for you in whatever season you're in that it doesn't make any sense anymore to me to purchase separate items for certain reasons. That is it. That is all I have for you. I know that uh, there are several people that have done this video recently and I'll link a bunch of them down in the description box if I can find them. But I do know I most recently saw Rebecca Morgan do this. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Please let me know what you're not buying anymore. I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section or what of 
what's on my list are you not buying anymore either and why i would love to hear from you guys down in the comment section please hit me up down there thank you guys so much for watching today i do hope that you enjoyed it i hope you'll want to give it a thumbs up i hope you'll want to subscribe and be part of my youtube fam here with that said I just appreciate you guys so much. I hope that you and yours are well, that you're good, that you're safe, that you're healthy, that you're getting along as best you can, that you are all loving each other, but loving each other from afar. And until next time, bye friends.